Welcome to our newest SPC Insights with Dr. Bill. Is your measurement system consistent? We're going to take a look at how you figure out if your measurement system is consistent. We rely on measurements for many things. Our measurement system is going to tell us if our products within specifications, if we met our goal, or if our process is improving, getting worse, or staying the same. So what really makes a good measurement system? What does it take for you to trust your own measurement system? Well, why do you trust some people? We know what to expect them from them because they're consistent. That's why we trust them. And the same is true with our measurement systems. We begin to trust them once we are getting consistent results. So what makes a measurement system consistent? We're going to look at that in this video. We're going to start with operational definitions and then talk about the operational definition for measurement consistency. We're going to show an example. We're going to talk then about recalibration and then we're going to summarize. So let's start with operational definitions and Dr. Deming. So what does an operational definition do? Well, Dr. W. Edwards Deming said it does the following. An operational definition puts communicable meaning into a concept. You know, for example, what is your on-time performance from your supplier? Maybe it's a promise date you asked for. If they ship it early, is it still on time? Or if you agree to change the promise date, is it still on time? What if you collect data on on time with everybody having a different interpretation of on time? Well, that data is going to be suspect and not much use to you. So it's critical that everybody agrees what is on time. So good operational definitions are critical when collecting data. So let's talk about the criteria for operational definitions. According to Dr. Deming, an operational definition has three elements. One is the criteria the standard against which to evaluate the results of the test, the test, which is a specific procedure for measuring a characteristic, and then the decision, the determination as to whether the test results show that the characteristic meets the criteria. So good operational definition enables everyone to use and understand a term in the same way every time. So let's talk about how to determine if a measurement system is consistent. You're going to measure the same sample multiple times. You're going to analyze the results using an individual's control chart, and then you're going to interpret the control chart. And if the control chart is in statistical control, then your measurement system is consistent. So let's talk about the operational definition for a consistent measurement system. And this comes from Dr. Wheeler, who applied Dr. Deming's three elements to an operational definition for a consistent measurement system. We're going to look at the criteria, the test, and the decision. If you want more information, look at EMP3 by Dr. Wheeler. So let's talk about the criteria. Remember, the criteria is the standard against which to evaluate the results of the test. So with a measurement system now, the criteria is a measurement system is consistent if and only if repeated measurements of the same item result in a sequence of values that are homogeneous or in control. So that's going to be their test. And the test is a specific procedure for measuring a characteristic. An individual's control chart is used to determine if those values are homogeneous. The individual values are plotted on the X chart, as shown here. And then the moving range, which is between consecutive points, are plotting on the moving range chart. The average and, average and control limits are calculated using the formulas as normal, and they're put on the graph. And then you have the decision, the termination as to whether the test results show that the characteristic meets the criteria. So the measurement process is consistent. If there are no points beyond the control limits in the control chart, either one of them, the X or the moving range, and no patterns, such as seven points in a row above or below the average. Measurement system is not going to be consistent when you have points beyond the control limits or patterns are present. And you also need at least 10 degrees of freedom in the data. So let's take a look at an example of how you do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the same sample 20 times over. Same operator measuring the same sample. And here are the results. Then we're going to take those results and we're going to analyze them using an individual's control chart. 
So we'll take a look first at the X control chart where you plot the repeated measurements and you calculate an average and you calculate the control limits. So there are no out of control points and there are no patterns. So this means that the X control chart is consistent. It's in consistent statistical control. Now let's look at the same thing with the moving range chart. Here's the moving range chart with the points plotted, the average and the upper control limits. There are no out of control points and no patterns, so the moving range control chart is consistent. It's in statistical control. So, is the measurement system consistent? Since both the X and moving range chart are stable, then the measurement process is consistent. If there had been any out of control points, then the measurement process would not be consistent. So is this the end of the story? We have a measurement system that's consistent. Well, you should continue to monitor your measurement process over time using the individual's chart as we've been doing. You want to monitor the stability as well as find and eliminate any special causes of variation that occur. Let how gets into recalibrating the measurement system. How do you handle that? You only recalibrate when the control chart sends you a signal. Recalibrating a measurement process that's in control will always increase variation in the process. It's always a mistake to do this. You're over controlling the process. So your consistency chart has an out of control point on it. The temptation is to assume that you need to recalibrate the measurement process. That's not necessarily true. You should work to find and eliminate the special causes of variation. Recalibration may not be necessary. So let's stack up a summary of what we've covered with the consistent measurement system. We talked about Dr. Deming's explanation of operational definitions, and we have show, showed how Dr. Wheeler applied it to a measurement system. And to ensure that a measurement system is consistent, you monitor it over time with an XMR chart and use that chart to help determine when to recalibrate. To see more SPC insights with Dr. Bill, subscribe. And you can also visit our website. We have over 200 knowledge base articles on all sorts of SPC and statistical analysis topics. And of course, you can make your own charts by buying or trying our software for free at www.spcforexcel.com. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it.